For our New Testament lesson, we'll be reading from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. We read part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount last week, the Beatitudes, which are well known, and we're going to continue on. And these verses also, especially the first part, are well known to us. So we'll be picking up with Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, here, the Word of God. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. We have known for some time research that talks about different learning styles. Now, it's interesting when we consider this kind of research, because I believe we also have known a lot of this by intuition. But some years ago, there was a lot of research telling us that people learn, they process and retain information in different ways, in different styles. Of course, we know that people retain information by auditory means. And of course, we must be believers in that because here we are with all of you and you're gracious to be here, but we are talking to you. You are receiving this. It is auditory in how you are processing and hopefully even retaining a little bit of what you may hear this morning. Uh, We also know that people have become even more visual, that people learn visually. Of course, it seems that there are so many screens around that we're always looking at images and looking at information, words. So we know people more than ever are visual in the ways they learn. We also know people learn through experience, the actual doing of something. In fact, that might be one of the more powerful ways that people learn something through their own behaviors and experience. But you put some of these together and you have what we could say is the recipe for processing, retaining information within our brains. The the mystery that is the brain and consciousness. I know for me, one of the things that I was very happy to hear about that there was some research when it comes to the way that you record your dates. You know, how you keep your calendar. You know, now people, when it's time to reserve a date, say you're in a meeting, you know, most people get get out their phones and they start entering into their phones, typing the little letters and numbers in. Um, Personally, I've always used a paper method. I I feel pretty antiquated these days when I pull out my little calendar and I write it out. Well, there was some research that said that the actual writing of those words can help to create a pathway into the brain, once again, the mystery that is the brain, and can help you retain that information by just that act of physically writing out. It's an avenue, 
an avenue of processing, of learning, of remembering. Jesus comes on the scene, and very early in his ministry, he is sharing what he is going to be all about. He really is sharing what his platform is, so to speak. He's sharing what he wants others to know about why he is present. And it's interesting that in this situation, Jesus is using an auditory form of learning. He is teaching. He is speaking. And people are listening to what he has to say. But we know that with Jesus, it's interesting that he goes on and he uses all those forms of how we can help people retain and process and learn information and maybe even remember a little bit of it. You know, think about it. Jesus will, in his life, show very clearly what he is speaking about. He will show how he will be with the least and the most vulnerable, what we talked about last week. He will show that in his life. He will model it for us. We can see it visually. This, of course, happens throughout his ministry and most clearly on the cross and through the resurrection. But Jesus also believes in the experiential approach because he will be sending out disciples. He sends out disciples to do ministry. He challenges the disciples to be in prayer the same way he is in prayer. So Jesus knows experiential learning and how critical experiential learning is. We see all of this in his ministry to help us process, to help us learn, and to help us remember. But I don't think it's quite what we have often thought of. See, see, Jesus, as he comes on the scene, it's not that he is trying to help you gain some more information that you're going to take into your life. It's not that Jesus is trying to help you remember some stuff that's going to help you in life. You know, that's not what this was all about. And in these few verses, we have a critical explanation of what the ministry of Jesus was meant to be about and how Jesus uses all these different ways of learning and processing because what he is trying to help you understand is you need to realize your very creation and that you were created in the image of God. And what he is trying to do is help you reconnect in communion with your creator God and through that with other people. See, it's not something that Jesus is trying to put into you put into the mystery that is our minds and consciousness and memories. He's not trying to put something into you. He's rather trying to have something come out of you. He wants you to understand how you were created, understand that you recommit and reunite with your creator God through his presence, and that the light of life then starts to shine within your life and out to others. That light can be released from your very creation, the fact you were created in the very image of God. I think about our our lives and how we've installed a lot of light dimmers in our lives in ways we maybe even haven't thought of, but they've been put in, they've been installed, and, and we turn down the very presence of the living God in our lives, the fact we were created in the image of God, we, we turn that down, we dim it. In some of our lives, it's only a little flicker. In others, it's become very gray and shady, the, the very real presence of the light of God. But here is Jesus saying, I have come that your light might shine what is already within you. I am not giving you necessarily something else you need to try to remember and process. Rather, I want you to understand your very creation. And I want you, through my presence, to be back in communion, in community with the living God and with each other so that your light might shine. See, he goes on. And he says in this passage, we kind of miss this part, We get caught up with the light shining that these verses talk about. And he says, I've not come 
I've not come to do away with any of the Scripture. See, I haven't come to do away with the fact that the Scripture shares you're created in the image of God. Rather, I have come that you might reconnect with the living God and so that the light of your life might shine brighter than ever. I think about the pathways we need to create for this light to work its way out. You know, I think about those pathways that are created. You know, what, what do we need to know that's written on our hearts? What is written in our hearts at creation? You know, that, that writing that maybe creates a pathway uh, into the mysteries of our consciousness and souls. What, what is written? What is written in faith? What do we know about faith? What, what is written about hope? You know, what is written about love? The love of God that's created you. The sacrificial love of Christ that we receive. Love that brings us literally to life now and for eternity. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.